Hi, I'm The Soloist. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about how to compare backpacks if you're in the market to buy one. Recently, I've been shopping for a new ultralight backpack. I've been using the Granite Gear Crown 60 for years and I have really enjoyed it, but it's a little bit too high on the weight scale for what I need and it has a little bit too much volume as well at a 60 liter pack. I'm looking for something that is lighter and has less volume uh, and is hopefully made out of high quality, durable, and preferably waterproof materials. But there are so many backpacks out there. How do you choose? Now I spent nearly 50 hours researching backpacks and taking down all their specs so that I could compare them in this spreadsheet. So what you'll see on this spreadsheet is a number of columns. Who makes the backpack, the manufacturer, what backpack it is, the product, a category I've assigned, which I'll discuss in more detail, what the backpack is made of for the main body, whether it's frameless or not, whether it's waterproof or not, and it's only labeled waterproof if the manufacturer has seam sealed it, and it's made out of a waterproof fabric. I've gone to the effort to include what the backpacks are made of. Some of the materials on here may be more durable than others. I don't want to weigh in on the precise durability. I'll let you decide. I know there's some disagreements in the community about this, and also there's not necessarily great research around head-to-head -head durability comparisons because there's so many different materials and deniers of material. So what I've included here is the material and its denier if it was provided by the manufacturer. You can decide for yourself what you think is durable or not. It's weight in grams, the main body capacity in liters, the total capacity including all side pockets in liters, the max load the manufacturer recommends, the cost of course, and the next few columns are computations that I've made that I think are helpful in choosing a good backpack. Column L is the weight adjusted for how much load the backpack can carry. So it's literally just the weight divided by the load. Now this gives you a sense for how heavy a backpack is given how much load it can bear. I think that's useful for some people, especially if you're looking for a bigger backpack that can bear more weight. Uh, this will help you find the cheapest backpack that can do the job. But for me, what I find more helpful is what I call the WAC, which is the weight adjusted for capacity. It is the weight of the backpack divided by the main body capacity. Now, certainly you could divide this by the total capacity if you wanted to, uh, but you know, I think I can always strap more gear to my backpack if I really need to using all sorts of systems. Uh, so I'm not necessarily even limited to uh, the pockets and how, how much they can carry. So for me, the main body is what matters. How, how much can I actually put in this backpack uh, and how much do I have to pay per unit of stuff in my backpack? And that's what the WAC measures. And so what you'll notice is I've color coded this uh, and green is ultralight. Uh, yellow is light, uh, orange is normal, and then red is heavy. And these categories are based upon the WAC. A WAC below 20 is, in my opinion, an ultralight backpack. Now, you'll notice, and some of you will disagree with me on this, but there are a number of ultralight backpacks that don't make my ultralight category. This is just a matter of personal preference. This is the way that I choose to look at it. Uh, you can look at it a different way and this spreadsheet is flexible. You can rearrange these things and you know you could take total capacity divided by uh, the cost or you know you could change w the cutoffs for the different colors. So don't take this as gospel. This is just my perspective on it, but this is helpful for me to kind of decide what kind of backpack am I looking for. So when we're choosing a backpack, what I'm looking for is a low weight adjusted for capacity and also a low cost. And I want those two things in a single number. And so what we have in the last column is dollars per whack. So it is how many dollars you need to pay per unit of weight adjusted capacity. Now I've actually divided the cost by 100 just to keep the units a little more reasonable. Uh, and these are unitless figures, so this isn't in dollars, this isn't $15, but 
they rank. So a lower dollar per whack is a good thing. It means you're getting a really high value for the price you're paying for this backpack in terms of its weight adjusted for its capacity. Let's just sort this by weight. What you'll see is, you know, all the backpacks you're used to reading about on ultralight blogs and stuff come to the top, right? You've got Z-Packs, you see Palante in there. Uh, you might be surprised to see REI in there, Mount Laurel, uh, and a number of other manufacturers like Waymark. All of them, you know, if you just go by weight alone, make the top of the list, but weight is not everything. If my backpack only fits 20 liters, then of course it will be lighter. So we want to know how heavy is it per unit of weight that it's going to carry, uh, or per unit of capacity that it has in the main body. So that's where the wall and the whack come in. When you play with the sorting on the whack and the dollars per whack, some interesting things happen. Let's take a look. So, if I sort by whack, you'll see that Granite Gear comes up at the top, and you still see some of the packs and manufacturers you expect. You see Z-Packs, Gossamer Gear, Palante, Waymark, Granite Gear again. This is the Crown 260 now, so this is a big pack with a frame. Uh, REI Co-op Flash 22 makes the list. Now remember, the reason it's sorted this way is because it's no longer sorted by weight. It's sorted by weight adjusted for capacity. So the Granite Gear Virga 2 is the top of this list because it can hold 50 liters, but it weighs only 539 grams. The REI Flash 22 is on this list because it comes in at a really light 368 but it only has a capacity of 20 liters in the main pack. So this all looks reasonable, probably. You know, the ultralights are on top of the lights. The green is on top of the yellow. But if we now adjust these scores for cost, let's filter on dollar per whack ascending. What you'll notice is the list looks a little different. Now, when filtered on dollars per weight adjusted for capacity, what we see is that the Flash 22 is a great value. It's only 368 grams, it carries 20 liters, which is enough for maybe a, a one day overnight, or if you're, if you're not cooking and going super ultralight with a bivy or something like that, you can probably get away with this. Uh, and it has a dollar per whack of only 10.1 which is the lowest by far. Let's see what happens next. The Kotopoxy, I'm probably not saying that right, <laughs> uh, Luzon 24 liter, 22 liters in the main body, 408 grams, and it only costs $75. So these two packs are just incredibly cheap and very, very light, and they can carry a reasonable amount of volume for their weight. So that is why they score so well. There's the Virga 2 again. It's super cheap at only $140, 50 liter capacity in the main body, 539 grams. Now this system is obviously not perfect. When you look at a backpack like the Virga 2 from Granite Gear at 50 liters and only 539 grams frameless, what you'll think, and it ran rightfully so, is that if you fill this backpack up to capacity, there's no way you're going to come in under the max load, which is 20 pounds uh, as listed by the manufacturer. So essentially, this backpack is too big for what it is, given the support structure it has, which is none. Uh, you know, if you fill up 50 liters, it will probably weigh more than 20 pounds. So uh, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Are you noticing a pattern here? The more expensive, fancy manufacturers are not hitting the top of this list because they are more expensive. Now, obviously they're using more expensive materials as well. All the packs that I've talked about so far are using nylon or Cordura, which are cheaper fabrics that have been around for a while. Then we finally get to a smaller manufacturer, Gossamer Gear. Their Murmur 36 Hyperlite Pack, 354 grams, 
28 liter main body capacity and only $159. So again, really good value and incredibly light. Has a really low dollar per whack at 20. Next we see some granite gears and these are all Cordura packs, either frameless or light removable plastic frames. And the reason they're so high on the list is because they're so cheap, right around $100. Finally, we get a Cottage Industry backpack with the Z-Pax Nero in position 7. This is a DCF backpack, so it's frameless and waterproof. 303 grams, which is incredibly light. 25 liter main body capacity for $200. And this has a dollar per whack of 24. Now we see some Palante packs. They're ultralight and they're lightweight. Come in one after another. Uh, basically, their, their whack is very similar because they're built by the same company. Uh, they have a very similar weight per unit of capacity. And their prices are pretty similar as well, 225 and 240 If we go down a little bit further, we've got a backpack from ULA, the CDT. Now you'll notice this is no longer in the ultralight category. You might ask why. Well. It's made by a company called Ultralight, so why isn't it Ultralight? Well, because it goes above my 20 whack threshold. This has a whack of 25, meaning it only carries 29 liters in the main body and it weighs 737 grams. So it's a little bit heavier than what I'm considering Ultralight for the amount of capacity it can carry in the main body. But it is a good value. So it's only $145. So again, it has a dollar per whack of 37. And if we keep moving down, we'll start to see other manufacturers. Waymark with their Evolve, Mount Laurel Designs with their Burn, uh, Deuter makes an appearance with their Speedlight series, z -Packs again. Finally, we get down to what a lot of people consider a de facto cheap option for ultralight backpacking, the Osprey Exos 48. But what you'll notice is this is no longer ultralight because of its weight per unit of capacity. Although it is pretty cheap. And then finally, we get down further on this list, we'll see a lot of the other cottage manufacturers. And it is not until basically near the bottom that we start to see hyperlight mountain gear. The Southwest 2400, an incredibly popular ultralight backpack. However, it is not even considered ultralight based on its whack. It is 852 grams with stock configuration that includes the aluminum stays that are in the backpack. And it only has a main body capacity of 40 liters. And it's $300. My puppy just sneezed. It's $300, which is, relative to these other backpacks, an absurd premium for what you're getting. Now, obviously, for the Hyperlite fans out there, I get it, you can remove the frame, and it will be lighter, and this will change the numbers. That's totally fine. But I am measuring this from the perspective of someone who just wants a backpack to work just as it is when it arrives, and they're not going to make any major modifications. I think one thing that makes this backpack ranking change significantly is the max load. So this backpack has a 40 pound max load, which is higher than others because of its frame. So if we sort this instead by dollar per wall, instead of dollars per whack, it will get credit for the extra load it can carry. And now, if you notice, it has risen significantly on the list because it can carry a lot for its price point. So let's filter back on dollars per whack and then see what's at the very bottom of our list. Hyperlite, Hyperlite, again, because they're expensive and because they're a little bit on the heavy side for what they can carry. 
And then finally, our heaviest backpack. This is sort of a uh, normal backpack for people who aren't interested in ultralight. It has some comfort features. It has lots of straps and load-bearing capabilities. This is the Osprey Aura AG50. This is actually a women's uh, backpack, but there's a men's version. This has a, not, a non-removable alloy frame. Uh, it's made of aerobic nylon, and it comes in at a whopping 1,859 grams for a 45 liter main body capacity, which is pretty bad. It has a dollar per whack of almost 100. So I hope this video has been informative about the way I look at backpack selection. I hope it helps you make better decisions when you buy your next backpack. I've made a copy of the Google Doc and I've shared it publicly. It's in the link down below the video. So you can make a copy of it yourself and edit it and add things and do whatever you need to do to make it work for you. If you found this video or the spreadsheet helpful, please make sure to smash the like button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next time on The Soloist. Thanks for watching.